Food Heals Podcast, episode 283. Coming up with a spending plan that looks like an eating plan is really helpful because it allows you small indulgences. I break down a spending plan into the three E's, essentials, the end game, and then the extras. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody, and the holidays are coming up, and it's a time for us to celebrate our lives and our families, but it's also a time that can bring up stress around our health, give us many opportunities to kind of fall off that healthy lifestyle wagon. And the truth is it brings up a lot of financial issues for many of us as well. Whether we are overspending on gifts or not getting paid as much during our time off or just wondering, you know, what does 2020 have in store for us? So that's why I wanted to bring on a financial expert and I'm thrilled to have her on today, Nicole Lappin. She's on the show today to help us reframe our relationship with money to make sure that we are really taking care of our ourselves over the holidays and in 2020 and beyond. Nicole is the best-selling author of Rich Bitch and Boss Bitch, and her new book is Becoming Superwoman. And if you love this episode as much as Susie and I did, seriously, I think we were just laughing the whole time, then come on over and hear Nicole's bonus episode only available to Food Heals VIP members. That's over at glow.fm slash Food Heals. For just five bucks a month, you'll get access to some bonus content from some incredible Food Heals guests. For example, we'll be talking to Nicole about some life hacks to work smarter, not harder, create your dream life, and how she became an author. Plus, we've got some great content coming up with Tess Chalice. We're going to talk to her about her six simple tips to feel radiant. And one of my favorite episodes we just released actually was with Lisa Thomas on the most powerful tool to overcome overwhelm and design a life that you love. So to get these bonus Food Heals episodes and so many more, check out glow.fm slash Food Heals. And you know, your $5 a month helps support this show and my green juice addiction. So I really appreciate it when you join. It means so much to me. And with the holidays coming up, we're going to have lots of opportunities to eat our faces off at holiday parties, events, and family gatherings. And so for me, one of the most important things that I do to stay healthy is to keep my gut health in check. They say the gut is the second brain, and I personally want to keep my brain power intact, which is why I'll be popping my probiotics like crazy this holiday season. And there is no better brand out there than just Thrive Probiotics. Thrive has amazing testimonials on their website where people have literally healed their gut issues, had their skin clear up. People are reporting more energy, sharper focus, and it helps so many people battling things like gout and colitis. It is absolutely the brand that I trust the most. I love Tina. She's the creator of Thrive. I've hung out with her at events and in person, and she's been on the show. And there's nothing better than buying your supplements from a trusted source. And I personally recommend putting your probiotics on auto ship so you never run out. So you're always able to keep your gut in check, whether it's the holidays 2020 or any other time of the year. And of course, we've got you covered with an exclusive discount code FOODHEALS10. So go to justthrivehealth.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS10 to get 10% off your auto ship of your probiotics and keep it healthy this holiday season and in 2020. All right, next up, Susie and I's interview with Nicole. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. She is the New York Times bestselling author of Rich Bitch and Boss Bitch. Love those titles. She's also the host of the reality show Hatched, and her third book, Becoming Superwoman, is out now. Please welcome today's guest, Nicole Lappin. Yay! I feel like there should be an applause track or something there. We can give you one. We can give you one. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. So glad to have you. So I would love for you to let Food Heals Nation know a little bit about who you are and what you do in your own words. 
Food Heals Nation. What's up? Um, who am I? Girl, I'm trying to figure that out every day. Uh, <laughs> I am a work in progress and a masterpiece at the same time. And I am the least likely person to be an author, a business expert, a money expert, anything. I just figured out how to take the opportunities I was given and create my dream jobs, except they were the exact same job. So a lot of business experts will probably come on the show also and say, hey, go out and do what you love, like YOLO FOMO, if not now, when? And (laughs) I'm like, whatever, yo. I didn't have the luxury of doing what I loved. I grew up in a broken home. I'm first generation American. My father died of an overdose when I was 11, not to get all like Dr. Phil all of a sudden, but you know, it I didn't have the option to just go out and like make an alpaca farm or an artisanal cheese shop in Brooklyn um, (laughs) because I needed to pay the bills. So the last thing I ever thought I would do was be like, be a business news or financial news correspondent. Um, But that was the opportunity I was given. I actually wanted to be a writer when I grew up, like a poet. So I started as an English major. And then fast forward, I don't know, two decades later, I became a writer, just not the kind I expected. Amazing. And I love your story of how you got into this. So can you take us back to um, how you kind of faked it until you made it into this business world? Totally faked it till I made it. Like 100% no shame. I would have never admitted this to you then, but I am super proud of it now. My boyfriend in high school said he wanted to be a hedge fund manager and I thought he wanted to be in gardening. They clueless. Like I was basically Elle Woods, Bud Burnett. (laughs) You know, I grew up in an immigrant family, first generation American, like never had the Wall Street Journal on the kitchen counter. Didn't know <laughs> shit about um, stocks, bonds, any of that, like maybe Bond Girl. That was all the information I had. And you guys know we don't learn this stuff in school. So when I got a job offer at 18 on the floor of the stock exchange in Chicago, they were like, do you know about money <laughs> or business? And I was like, well, I don't know. My family just used cash. They did criminal things. Like I bailed them out of jail. With cash. <laughs> I mean, that was the extent that I knew. And I totally lied. And I was like, absolutely, effing lutely let's do this. And I realized that money is just a language like anything else. We just don't have a Rosetta Stone for that language growing up. So once I spoke it, uh, I then spoke it to the world. Um, I became an anchor on CNN, on CNBC, on Bloomberg. I covered the financial crisis. And I realized that money is not a serious topic. I used to break out into hives thinking about it. But Mm -hmm. it's a language like anything else. Like if you went to China, you didn't speak Chinese, you'd be super confused. If you went to Wall Street, you didn't speak the language of money, you would be super confused. And so now I definitely didn't expect to be teaching other young women how to speak the language of money or get into the financial literacy space. But I became really passionate about it because it's not that complicated. Like it's actually not as scary as it seems. So I wanted to talk to my former self, that girl who was smiling and nodding and not joining basic money conversations because she was too freaked out and her armpits were spending too much. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I love how you say like, it's not that hard. It's not that complicated and it can be easy. And money is a resource that can come easily to us, but very often it's us who are blocking it. So can you break that down? Like what are some things that we can all do to attract more money into our lives and really tactically what we can do? Oh, that's so interesting. You know, in my latest book, I talk about um, the idea that money is energy as well. And like, you can manifest it. Now, listen, you can't just sit on your booty and manifest money and expect to be rich. Like you have to put your back into it. You have to do things for that. But I actually think that, you know, if you want more money, you have to put more money out there in the world, because it's like that law of attraction, but taken in a financial bent. And you know, the times where you feel like you need to buckle down the most might be the times where you actually need to put more money out there, tip more, you know, give more and it will come back to you. But barring all of that, you know, really coming up with what your goals are. A dream without a plan is just a wish and dreams and wishes are awesome, but they don't pay the bills. And so when people are like, yo, I just want a million dollars. That's all I want. And then I'll have financial freedom. I'm like, really? What do you want to do with that million dollars? I don't know. Maybe you need more than a million dollars. Maybe you need less than a million dollars. First, figure out the life you want and then reverse engineer to figure out how to get the money and the resources to live that life you want. But otherwise, it's like saying, hey, ladies, let's go to a party in LA. You're like, cool. 
where is it going to be? Is it going to be in Beverly Hills? Is it going to be in Santa Monica? Is it going to be in the Valley? Like, who's going to be there? Is there a dress code? Is there? Is it a onesie party? Is it a prom theme party? Do I need to bring anything? Is it an alcohol party? Like, I have so many questions about this party, but we don't have the same questions about the destination for our own lives. I want to go back because you said money is a language. I get it. But there's also a lot of emotional stuff behind it, especially I'm actually first generation too. come to think of it. My parents came here when they were kids, but they lived the immigrant life of not having a lot of abundance. And you know how that can get passed on in terms of attitudes towards money. Can we talk a little bit about that, about the emotional connection we have to money? Oh my God, a hundred percent. The math around money, it like a fifth grader can do. It's the humanities part. That's the most difficult part. You know, I have a show with the editor in chief of entrepreneur magazine called hush money. And we talk about like these taboo subjects because those are the ones that trip us up the most. Like who pays on a first date? Do you lend your friend money? Like, how do you get your friend to pay you back? The rest of it is super easy. Like how to calculate a spending plan, super easy. How to, you know, get a 401k and an IRA in order. Like I could tell you what those are in two seconds. It's like how to talk to your significant other about money, how to get a will together, how to, you know, come up with a trust, all of those types of things. Like who's going to pay the bills? Who are the bills going to be under? Like, do we get a prenup? Do we get a postnup? Those are all the things that like are the most difficult ones to tackle. And I feel like that colors... A lot of our experiences, I know, like for myself, I had to work through that. You know, my parents um, had two different perspectives on money. My dad liked to make it and save it. And my mom liked to spend it. Yay. And so, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm no stranger to that. It was like two conflicting ideas about money. Totally. And a man is not a financial plan. It's really hard to get your financial life together proactively. But the times when it's a necessity is sadly still like when you get a divorce or if your husband dies and you know i think that knowing where that stuff is regardless knowing whose name the bills are under because i'll do a lot of you know interventions or boot camps with women who went through a divorce and like their credit is messed up because either the bills weren't in their name or they were under their name and the bills weren't paid or something like that you know our credit score is like our financial report card and so this is the stuff that we should be thinking about and researching way more or at least a little bit more like i'm down to research vacation for six hours, but just put a little bit of that time into figuring out how to follow your own money trail. It's such a shame that none of this is taught in school. We are not taught how to handle money. And if our parents don't have good relationships with money or we grow up in a certain way, it very often shapes who we are and what we believe about money. It's very hard to change those things. So you grew up and you you had an abusive childhood. You did not grow up wealthy. You grew up in such a way that you had to figure it out on your own. And I'm, you know, cheers to you, by the oh, way. Thanks. That's amazing. And so what are some resources for us? You've got your two books, which are Rich Bitch and Boss Bitch, which Susie and I are obsessed with those Thank titles. You. So good. <laughs> You're welcome. But like what, are, and you have your show, what are some resources and where can people start if they're just like, I am so lost about money. I am so confused. I am in debt and I need to make a plan. Totally. And I hear you on the stuff not being taught in school. Like I feel you. I've been saying this for years where I'm like, why do we learn the Pythagorean theorem or how to dissect a frog or an isosceles triangle? Like what does that have to do with our lives? Why don't we learn Right. a budget or taxes or business plan. Hello, that would be way more valuable than like, you know, there's this meme going around that says something like, I don't know how to do our taxes, but I know about the center of a nucleus or mitochondria. Right, right. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> so not helpful in our lives. And I said this for so long that I was like, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. So I created the money school online, which is an online masterclass that's video and quizzes and worksheets and all that stuff. And then the boss school and then the balance school that tracks my third book. Listen, I am the least likely person to become a professor in any of this stuff. Like I didn't work at a bank. I didn't get my MBA. And I swear if I could do this, like anyone can do it. It's really just the biggest enemy is between your ears. So whether you think you can or you can't, you're probably right. 
You're right. Yep. I love that quote. It's so true. And I think the mindset shift is key to bringing it in because it's like, yeah, you can do the math and you can figure it out. And that's the practical side. But if you're still having a negative connotation with money or emotional connection, or you're still like, you're like, well, I'm hungry and I'm going to order Postmates instead of going to the grocery store. And that's an emotional thing because you're, you know, sad that day and you feel like being lazy. Like there's all these things intertwined to make us create situations where we're making poor decisions, even though we know better. So like, how can we shift out of that mindset of making those poor decisions or it's like shop people who have shopping addictions or even you know something even terrible like your dad like a drug addiction or something like that like how can we really shift our focus and shift our mindset yeah i think coming from a place of aspiration versus deprivation is a really important mindset switch to take you know we also come to general obligations from a scarcity mentality especially for women instead of an abundance mentality like we think if we say no to something, we'll never get another job or we'll never get another party invite or we'll never get another date or a podcast interview invite or a panel or like whatever. And that's just not the case. We know that to be true, but we get in our own ways a lot. And I think coming up with a spending plan that looks like an eating plan is really helpful because it allows you small indulgences so you won't end up binging later on, just like in a regular diet. Like you have to treat yourself. You know, when people say in the beginning of the year, Nicole, you would be so proud of me. I cut out my morning latte and then come like April or May, they're like, well, I cut out the morning latte. So I bought myself a Gucci purse <laughs> I'm so hungry and so deprived. Like the same thing happens in a regular diet. I, you guys want more than I'll ever know about diet stuff. I don't know what's popular. Keto, Shimino, like grapefruit diet, whatever it is. Like, honestly, if you don't allow yourself a Hershey's kiss, you'll end up noshing on a big old hunk of chocolate cake in the middle of the night because you're so hungry. Surprised, like we've all been there. Like you have to be realistic with it. So you know, I break down a spending plan into the three E's because I also love alliteration. So essentials, which is seventy percent of your overall take home pay, going going to like housing, food, transportation, and all of that. Like even if it's the Postmate, whatever, but just keep it to that amount. And then fifteen percent to the end game. So your future self, your investment, your savings, and then fifteen percent going to the extras. So like. The latte, the mani pedi, the whatever does it for you. Like the latte example is just a metaphor. If you don't like coffee, like get something else. But I hate it when right. financial experts will say, just cut out the morning latte and you'll save so much money by making your coffee. It's like, no. First of all, think of yourself as somebody who has billable hours. Even if you're not a lawyer, you still have billable hours. Your time is valuable. And fussing around with a filter has never helped me in the morning. And if you think of like actually getting a pep in your step in the morning, keeping yourself like in a good mental state and making more money. Like I think we should focus on making more money versus like clipping coupons and saving and digging in the couch for coins because that's really how you're going to grow your wealth. 100%. And I'm all about investing in myself. So I'm constantly investing in things like masterminds. Like for example, I invest in my assistant because she allows me to have more time in my day, which allows me to create more, which allows me to do more things that I can get paid for. So I've created where I can pay someone so that I can create more money, which covers her costs and then creates more income in my life for all the things that I can create for my clients. Like what's the percent of investing in yourself, in your future, in your business, that type of thing. You are speaking my language girl it totally like if I can pay somebody else to do something for like a rate that will allow me to make more money I am here for it all day every day and twice a Monday right. like and even with the postmate type of thing you know if it takes you whatever the fee is to go get stuff you know, the cab fee, the subway fee, wherever you're living, you know, and the time it could take you, if you could spend that time for cooking, and if you're into cooking, that's a whole other story. If it's meditative for you, like get on with your bad self. But if it's just an errand or a chore and it's something you don't like, like, and you could spend that hour, you know, making a couple hundred dollars, like then I would say that is probably a much better investment. And I always say that investing in yourself will pay most dividends later on. It's true. You probably have seen like the rewards of those masterminds yielding business opportunities down the road uh, cover that cost and then some, right? Exactly. Exactly. 
All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope that you're enjoying our interview with Nicole and learning some great money-saving tips and reframing your brain. And when we're thinking about the holidays and saving money, luckily, Food Heals has got you covered with our brand new holiday gift guide, which is full of discounts and promo codes on our favorite products services, and possible gifts that you could be buying for your friends and family this year. Giving your friend and family members the gift of health. There are so many gifts that don't give back to the world or aren't good for you. Why not give your friends and family something that is good for you? So we've got lots of discounts on vitamins, supplements, superfoods, elixirs, audiobooks. We've got lots of skincare products, CBD products, so much more. Um, Some pretty candles. I'm looking at the guide right now and some some pretty bracelets and things that we found that we adore. So I would love for you to check it out. You just go to foodhealsnation.com. It's totally free. Click on gift guide and you can download it. We've got some essential oils, some vegan eyeliner that I'm personally obsessed with. It's just some great products. So go check it out at foodhealsnation.com and click on gift guide. Enjoy. Food Heals Nation, earlier in the show, we talked about, you know, how to stay healthy during the holidays. And this is something that I swear by. You guys have heard her on the show before. It's all about energy bits. These are one ingredient, zero sugar. It is algae. It is a clean, simple superfood that supports your energy and health in more ways than you can imagine. I personally pop these all day long, the chlorella and the spirulina, and they're really, really helping me get through a lot of my events that I'm going through, get through my travel schedule. They help me with jet lag. They help me be able to stay up a little later wake up a little earlier, and really give me a lot of more energy in my day. They've also got the beauty bits. So all of us women, we're always trying to anti-age and keep ourselves young. And this is definitely something that can help you do that because it is just such a superfood, pure, optimal nutrition, absolutely full of more protein than you can imagine. All your daily greens in one minute. It helps you not get hangry if you're intermittent fasting or, you know, it helps you curb those sugar cravings. If you're having those throughout the day, it is the perfect travel food. It is great for before and after workouts. It is just my go-to to get my greens in. And you know, I'm a green juice junkie and sometimes I do not have the time to juice when I'm rushing around. So I have these in my car, in my purse, and I know that I can just pop them anytime to get that energy that I need to get those greens in me. Um, they have their beauty bits, their energy bits, and their recovery bits, which are all very impactful, very powerful. And there are lots of ways to take them. You can chew them, you can blend them, you can swallow them. I personally just swallow them because I think it's so easy. So many, you know, fitness experts are using these. You guys know Ben Greenfield and his podcast. He's been on our show as well. And he absolutely swears by energy bits as his go-to algae source. So many great testimonials on the website as well. So if you want to stay healthy during the holidays, 2020 and beyond, check out energybits.com. Of course, we scored you an exclusive discount code. Use the code FOODHEALS and you'll get 20% off your purchase. Enjoy Food Heals Nation. And now back to my interview with Nicole. You are listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. Okay, so your new book, Becoming Superwoman, what does it mean to be a superwoman? And so Superwoman, the character, is something that we usually aspire to be as little girls, right? This action hero that saves the world and looks super cute in her bustier and coiffed hair and all the things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Superwoman, that character, is all things to all people. So ultimately, she's nothing to herself. And therein lies the real danger. Forget about saving the world. I think if we're all things to all people. We're nothing to ourselves. We're not putting our oxygen mask on first. And they don't say that on the plane. And listen, ladies, I live on a plane these days. So I have heard it a bazillion times. Like, they don't see oh, my so, mask on first. That's right. Like, just to waste time. It's true. You can't be of service to anyone else if you're crashing and burning yourself. So a super space woman is a woman who does just that, who values herself first. I love that. And super space. So it's not the super woman that we're used to. It is the super woman. Exactly. Yeah, it's not Superwoman, that character idea. It's just being a super 
woman. It's being a super friend. It's being a super boss. It's being like all of the different things that you are uh, and how you can do that to the best of your ability is by taking care of yourself first. You know, I did a social experiment a couple months ago as the book was launching and I asked women to list the top five things they value most. So I had them in for a casting and I gave them a little whiteboard and I said, list the top five things. And they wrote my house, my car, my job, my kids, God, food, whatever, like all great things. And none of them, none of them wrote themselves on the list. Like, would you write yourself on the list on the top five things you value most on the top 10 things you value most until a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have been on that list for sure. Right. Right. And what are some of like the self-care practices that you utilize on yourself to, you know, take care of yourself, put that oxygen mask on first? You know, I aim for more good days than bad days and I aim for progress and not perfection. But in an ideal world, I would wake up and do my gratitude journal. I definitely feel the difference when I don't do it in the morning and in the evening. Mm. Um, and not look at my phone for a couple of hours and do, you know, what my intentions are instead of, as you guys know, like going into email rabbit hole of trying to fight other people's fires and going into their agendas. Like at the end of the day, you're like, what did I accomplish today? I just right. dealt with 800 emails and that is not a job. <laughs> you know, I used to think like taking meetings was a job. It's not, you need time to follow up with all of that. And so in an ideal world, I would batch my emails into two chunks where I could actually get the most done and not just constantly be refreshing. And then I batch my social media time. Social media is awesome for many, many things. But if you're just comparing yourself and feeling depressed and terrible and like getting on your ex-boyfriend's sister's cousin's first grade right. page, like that's not helpful to your overall productivity. And so I would batch those as well. And then end my day, not with beaming my phone into my eyeball because I couldn't sleep for the longest time. And I was on this like ambient Adderall cocktail. I thought, oh God. why, why can I not sleep? Um, hello, Captain Obvious. Maybe it's because you're beaming the bright light into your eyeball from like three inches away before you go to bed. And so when I stopped doing that, I, hello, could actually sleep. And, um, but you know what? Look, I don't do that every single day. Um, I was just on a talk show in LA where they asked all of the guests before the show, like, what was your morning routine? And I had just gotten there. Like I was frazzled. I ran in and I thought, okay, well I could, you know, really talk up the book and like what's in the book. And I could, but that's just not me. I'm not that girl. And, um, and I can't lie. I can't keep up with the lies. So I just don't do it. So the first guy was like, I drank lemon water. I wrote down the top, five things I'm manifesting. And I really like looked at that. And then the host was like, what are those things? And he said, you know, just the things I look at every day. I'm like, BS dude. Okay. The second one <laughs> was like, I drank lemon water. I ran for 10 miles, blah, blah. And they got to me and I really wanted to say, you know, my ideal day, like the gratitude and the batching emails and the me time and all the things. And I said, you know what? I woke up this morning. I took the eyelashes off my face from last night. I got a venti red eye. I scrolled. I got onto my boy, ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend's page and I like just tried to get something out of my life. So that's really what happened. And there was no lemon left in LA to drink lemon water because apparently y'all drank it. So, you know. Oh, the lemons and the cucumbers are gone. They're all gone. You guys, you yeah. guys took all of them. You made a monopoly. So, you know, I say that only to say, like, I don't live by this every single day. I think it, it would be disingenuous for me to say that. Don't read your reviews. They always say, like, for your books or your products, but you can't help yourself. So I was recently you can't reading, not. right. You can't, like, especially when they tell you not to, you want to do it even more, of course. Um, I was reading one of them recently where it said, you know, Nicole is a do as I say, not do as I do type of person. I'm like, did you even read this book? Like, <laughs> no, I'm not. I definitely am the first to say I don't do this every single day. You can't like, you definitely, you just, you ha like I said, you have to be a work in progress and a masterpiece at the same time. You can be both. 
One hundred percent, and I'm I'm with you because like here I am, Susie and I have this show, Food Heals, and I do as much as I can, but I make mistakes all the time. I don't follow all the protocols that I talk about, you know. Especially the morning routine is something that I struggle with so much because like I do my gratitude and I do all the things, but like sometimes I have to check the email. And my mentor said to me, "Do you know what email is?" And I was like, "What?" He said, "OPP, other people's problems." <laughs> so it's like checking. Right. And checking the email is literally making yourself responsible for all these other people's problems that need your response in in general. And so it's like, don't answer the email, stay off the social for as long as possible, do things for you, take care of yourself. And then all the things can happen. But like, yeah, when I'm traveling, I'm on my phone all the time. You know, I'm just like, I can't keep it up everywhere all of the time. And that's okay. And as long as you accept it and don't judge it, that's part of the process too, is just being non-judgmental about it and being like, hey, I'm going to do my best every day. But it's not always going to be great. Totally. And we say the meanest things to ourselves. Like we're, we have such a mean girl inside our head where we, if we mess up, we're like, you're the worst. At least this is what my audio tape sounds like in my head. Like you thought right. you're the worst. You never do anything right. You're going to die alone, be broke and homeless, live in the gutter with cats. But first you need, like, <laughs> I say that to myself. If I mess up at work, or do something, you know, I say something wrong on the air or whatever. And if my best friend said, Hey, I messed up on the air. I did something at work. Would I say, Hey girl, you know what? You suck. You're the worst. You're going to die alone. (laughs) You're going to be broken homeless. No way. I would say, baby, it's going to be okay. You're the best. You got this. It's all good. Like I give her a hug, but we don't, we don't treat ourselves anywhere near how we would treat our best friend. No, we don't. Not at all. Yeah, I do the same thing, but I'm, mine is like an inner child. Like, how? What would I say to a child? Would I say, "God, you fat, ugly beast"? What are you doing? <laughs> no. I would say, "Hey, gorgeous, it's all gonna be good. Everything's all good." Yeah. You know, like it's just so funny. Okay, so we've got the holidays coming up. What can we do to enjoy the holidays, be healthy around the holidays, but also save money during the holidays? Because it's an easy time to spend all the money on all the parties and all the food and all the gifts. What are some of your tips? So I think that same experiment I did with listing what you value most can be done for the holidays. You know, think about the top five people you're giving gifts to or the top 10 people on your list or whatever. You know, make sure that you're on that list. We often forget about that. And I think that when it comes to gift giving, it's okay to send money. You can do it electronically. You can write a little note and say like, hey, this is for you know the pumpkin spice latte that I know you love or like you know two margaritas at your favorite Mexican place down the street, whatever. You can personalize it, but it keeps you on budget and it lets the other person get exactly what they want. And so I'm kind of about bringing sexy back to sending money. I'm bringing sexy yeah. back. Okay, that's how my work. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Let's talk about when you give a gift, why are you giving that gift? Are you giving it because you feel like you need to? Are you giving them something you need or just something you found that was cute at Target? Like, be really mindful about the gifts that you are giving. And sometimes you could just give something of your time. Like, are you a massage therapist? Give a massage, you know, something like that, where you can give them something that's super valuable that doesn't cost you any money. Totally. I think that's a great little tidbit and piece of advice. You know, I'm not, I'm not all about giving on the holidays because you're supposed to. I show up for my friends all year round. You know, I think every day is a celebration. It, you know, every day break open the nice wine, use the nice china because you never know, you know, what if there's going to be a tomorrow. Um not to get too esoteric and existential, but you know, I think the same thing applies. Like show up and and be there with your time, it's your most valuable asset. You, know, you can always get more money. This is coming from the money lady. You cannot get more time. 100%. And I just thought of a good gift if anyone listening wants to get me a gift. So don't get me bath bombs or anything like that. I have enough of that <laughs> crap. Here's what I would like. A ride from LAX to Ooh. my house because just <laughs> just recently yes. they have now changed LAX where you have to take a shuttle. I just did this two days ago to the Uber, Lyft, and cab area where you have to then wait in another line. So oh, if yeah. you check if you check a bag 
first you have to wait for the bag, which is like, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Well, first you have to get off the plane. If you're in the back, you're screwed. If you're in the front, you might be okay. Then you have to wait for the bag if you check a bag. Then you have to take a damn shuttle to another part of the airport. And if there's traffic, you're in that shuttle for 30 minutes. Then you have to wait for an Uber, a Lyft, or a cab with everyone else who's doing it. And you wait in line. You don't wait for the Uber. They've changed the whole thing around. Anyway, so if you want to give me a gift this year, send me a gift certificate that says, I will pick you up from Aww. LAX. Done. I love that so much. Or here's my suggestion to that sister. First of all, I don't okay. know what you're doing checking bags because that should be illegal. So I didn't no. check a bag this time, but I'm just saying like when I came back from Australia, I certainly had a bag. But yeah, when sometimes I came back you have Vegas, to check bags. I, I don't know how those people do it. I don't. If you go for a weekend, I get it. But like I never yeah. do. I Okay. Tell me, tell me the secret. No, I mean, I ship stuff. So I've been on this book tour and like in so many cities, but I will ship stuff and then I'll do laundry. And then I am going to Bali, um, stopping in Australia with my girlfriend in a couple weeks. And the last time I went to Bali, I was like, why did I bring anything? Cause that's the last time I think I checked a bag. The dresses there were like $4. They were basically yeah, clothing, true. and you can get stuff anywhere if you really forgot something. And then you know, I just so I flew in late last night to LAX, and um, I looked at that same curbside thing. And I, you can do an Uber or a Lyft black, um, and they'll pick you up curbside. So here's where we can bring this all what? full circle. Yep, is hold on, you're blowing my mind right now. All I have to do is call a black car. That's it. So that's getting back to that whole mindset of aspiration versus deprivation. So like if you focus on working harder and making more money, then you will save time and you could get a sweet black Uber or Lyft or whatever ride instead of spending an hour, whatever, doing the shuttle. And that's worth my time because I would rather have my time back and spend a little bit more money on the black. I had no idea that was an option. And now I'm obsessed. I, you're welcome. First of all, I, <laughs> I came in with Thank my girlfriend you. another time. She's an entrepreneur in Santa Monica and we both um, landed after like a full crazy day in New York and it was around midnight or something. And she was telling me this new system that LAX put into place and no, I'm not bullish and I'm not a fan of it, but she explained it to me and she was like, well, we could take, you know, the X version and do the shuttle and do blah, 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 or we could do the black. And I was like, there's only one option here. Correct. (laughs) And we're like, (laughs) we're both getting the black. The SUVs are coming right now. And yeah, I was there in two minutes. Okay. I'm so sorry at Food Hills Nation that we totally got off topic, but this is changing my world right now because I travel all the time and I have to go back next week. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm not dealing with that shit again. So I'm like, someone pick me up, but great. I'm getting the black. I had no idea that was an option. I'm so happy. Okay. I got you. (laughs) Getting back to becoming a superwoman, all the things we were talking about. What, what, what final words do you have for Food Hills Nation? What's, what's your best advice for, you know, money, the holidays, health, Anything you want to talk about. So many things. Um, You know, I would say be mindful of how many times you say, I'm sorry. I think I said it once during this interview, um, but I am on this big kick of just counting how many times we say, I'm sorry through the day, especially as women. We say way too much. We apologize for things we don't do wrong. And I think it just puts us in a general place of weakness. And so, look, we're all, we all have stuff to do. We're late. Instead of saying, I'm so sorry for late, blah, 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 and going TMI and explaining the tampon thing that happened or the garbage truck or the accident mm-hmm. traffic, whatever, like we, we all get it. Just say thank you for your patience and move on. And it's a small thing, but it's really the way we talk to ourselves. We talked about that earlier. The way we talk to others frames our reality. So lately I'm on a kick to help my girlfriends do that. And then also when they talk shit about themselves and they say like, I'm so fat, I'm so ugly. I'm so, my hair is the worst, whatever. I say, stop talking about my friend like that. Because if anyone else told you those things, like I would punch them in the face or gouge their eyes out. You are not allowed to say mean things about my friend like that. 100%. I want to be your friend. You are. <laughs> you are. Don't talk about my friend like that. <laughs> when we were in Italy on the second um, Food Heals retreat, I was rooming with my girlfriend, Jill, and she apologizes like no one you've ever met. So the whole time I would just say the Rachel Hollis quote, I'd be like, girl, stop apologizing. Like I was yelling at her. So I'm getting her that book for Christmas. <laughs> and then the other thing that happened in Italy is that 
you know, there's 12 women and we'd all be like, oh, I love your dress or you look great or you're so smart or whatever. As soon as someone would get a compliment, they would downplay it and be like, oh, this whole thing. So we made up a new rule that every time you got a compliment, you had to say, thank you. And it's true. And that was it. I like that. Yeah. Yes, every compliment. Exactly. That is in boss bitch. There's a whole thing. And I do a little skit. I may have already put that up on Instagram TV where I do this like role playing with my girlfriends where it's totally true. I'll do it twice. I'll have, I'll say, Hey, compliment my hair. And the first time they'll say like, your hair looks great. And I say, well, it's so oily. There's a ton of dry shampoo. I haven't washed it for five days. I was in the wind. I, my extension is popping out, but your hair looks amazing. <laughs> and then I say, okay, let's try this one more time. And she says, your hair looks great. And I say, thank you. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> totally. Amazing. To stop saying sorry so much and start saying thank you more and also start saying no more. But that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. So I know I'm like, we can go into that. But yes, girl, yes. Start saying no to those things that don't serve you or waste your time. And what is your Instagram so we can all go watch that fabulous video? <laughs> so it's at Nicole Lappin for all the social media. Nicole Lappin is making it happen. Go follow her on Instagram. <laughs> can you tell us where to get the book, follow you online, all that good stuff? Yes, please. Book wherever books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, support your local bookstores or my website, NicoleLappin.com. We have plaques that you can get there too. They're really cute for your desk where it says like your first and last name and then boss bitch or superwoman like it would principal. And Susie, that's what I'm getting you for Christmas. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yay. So yeah, you can check me out online and all my adventures and misadventures. I'll have to like live stream my next LAX experience for you. Or just oh, I'm so me exactly. Yes, I'm in. I'm so excited. I was like, I'm never doing this again. No, never again. Making more money, girl. <gasps> yes, I'm totally down. And then have your assistant call a car. Oh, for sure. Oh, Melissa would totally do that. Melissa's the best. Yes. Shout out I'm to Melissa. All about, yeah. I'm all about investing in that time. That's going to help you do the things that only you can do. Mic drop everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> Pick up the mic now. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Nicole. Thanks, ladies. This was so fun. Thank you. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately.